I'm Chris Trott. You guys will know me as Trotty Golf. I have been fitting golf clubs for the best players around the world for 18 years on the global tours. This month is putter fitting month at Club Champion. You're going to receive a free putter fitting with any purchase of putter or golf shaft. So it's crucial that you get the right information about what you need in one of these for your game. Let's dive into it. When it comes to choosing your putter, there are gonna be a lot of choices. You're gonna be quite intimidated by what's going on. The shapes, the looks, the length, the lie, all of these things are gonna impact how that club performs for you. It's not just a case of getting on the green, seeing which one holds a putt and going from there. There's much more detail you need to look into. But first, let's define a mallet putter versus a blade putter and what these two things actually mean. You'll notice looking down at them, one is much smaller, much more sleek than the other. That's gonna give you a different center of gravity location, which is gonna give your golf ball a different roll and ball launch as you interact. One will be much more sensitive to feel, but if you do miss it away from the center, which does happen for us as golfers, the head is going to be more likely to twist. And ultimately, if the blade of that putter, the face angle, is not square to your target line, intended target line to make that putt, it's not gonna go in. So think about that when you make the choice. The other simple place to look when it comes to mallets versus blades is real estate on the top. Look at all of those aids to help you align the putter, align the target and hit your start line. You may benefit from that as a player. As you look down, your eye potentially will suit what is happening on top of the golf club. You've got to test it and with all fitting, you've got to be honest with yourself. Our first port of call when it comes to our club fitting is the length at which we're gonna play. For this, where I press you to go is to figure out where your eye falls in relation to the golf ball. So as you set up to the target and you get into a comfortable position, you wanna take a golf ball and drop it from between your two eyes and see where that lands. You need to practice this and work on it in the fitting bay until you can get to the point where you drop it from the center of your eyes, immediately onto the golf club, behind it, or on top of the golf ball. That way you know that you're stacked and in a good position. You may not know how you set up to it, but I want your feet to be shoulder width apart. I want your eye line to be over the golf ball or slightly inside. That's a key piece of information as it impacts our next step. But work on a length that when you let your arms fall down, naturally hanging from your side to where they're gonna be, it puts your eye line in a position that you, the golfer, are comfortable with. I don't like outside of the putter, outside of the ball, on this way. I don't like too far inside, but getting those eyes over the ball is a good spot or slightly inside. One of the first things your fitter at Club Champion is gonna go through with you, we have to define the type of putter you are. How do you set up to that golf ball? Do you have your eye line inside the ball or over the golf ball? Your fitter's not gonna change the way in which you putt, but they might suggest some certain things as to what might benefit you as you get into a style of putter. So, if someone simply stands inside the golf ball, obviously this is going to dictate the length of putter that we use. It's the first area we look at. Someone standing inside would be defined as the ball dropping from the center of the eye position. And as you can see, it lands well inside that golf ball. This would then mean that our path of the stroke is likely to move inside the ball to target line to square to inside the ball to target line. So there's a chance that you're going to have quite a bit of face rotation when it comes to that. What does that mean to me, the golfer? And if I'm comfortable in here, which putter do I choose? You're gonna want a putter that moves to that path. There are two options here. Let's say you've decided you like the look of the mallet. You want the benefit of off center strikes giving you the energy. Well, now you've got two different, and again, look at the balance point, toe hangs. Notice how the toe 
defined by this section and the heel this section. The toe sits lower than the heel versus my, this would be defined as face balanced, how the face of that putter sits immediately up to the sky. There are other varying options. I have a slight toe hang option here, or I may get into bringing my blade back into the conversation. Look at the amount of toe hang there, all based on that mass, that CG location in relation to this section, which is defined as the hosel. So if you are standing inside the golf ball and you tend to want the face to rock open, square to my path, square to my strike and release through, toe hang could well be an option for you. If someone who perhaps misses putts to the right, this is something you're gonna to wanna to consider as it'll help you get that blade back square to your intended target. So now you've covered length and you've covered toe hang, how you want that putter to look in reference to where you stand as the player. Now you're gonna have a lie angle. Some of us are a lot taller, some of us are gonna be a little bit lower. The lie angle of the putter is how the sole of that putter sits in relation to the green. It can be changed for you at Club Champion. Your fitter can move that to suit you. So if you're someone who has low hands and you can see here the toe of my putter, again toe being defined as this section, is off the turf. Or you're someone who perhaps gets this way and stands much more upright, which I love because that means if you do happen to break down that stroke, you can see there it breaks down down the line, down the intended line. So if you go that way, you may need the putter to be moved more upright. Your club champion specialist will take care of that. They'll bend the lie angle, they'll move the toe in relation to the shaft orientation, and that will give you a face plane tilt that means the ball will start down your intended line. That is simply all that means. The one thing that interacts with the putter is gonna be your hands. Therefore, the grip is the next part of this that is essential to you. It's your contact point with any golf club. I can't overemphasize how important this is. Now, there's a couple of different styles I've got here with me. One is gonna be this thicker version. As you can see, if you have large hands, this could be an option for you. But when the putter grip goes thicker like this, and it has this very flat part on it, this is gonna allow your thumbs to go on top. Once you get there, there's less manipulation, rotation of the wrists. You're making this more of a stroke with the larger muscles of the body. Another option that I have here for you, which you may not be too familiar with, is gonna be something that's much wider. This allows your hands to go down as one unit. Now look at my shoulders. By putting my palms together almost in a prayer type position and then gripping the putter because the real estate of that is wider, now my shoulders are more level. You could be a left below right person. Again, it makes shoulders level. It's just another option for you. Don't be pushed into anything. You're the player, you're gonna make the decision, but it's on your fitter here at Club Champion to show you these options. The final would be what's deemed as a pistol. So you can see here, slightly thicker in the top hand, and then it's skinny in the bottom. It's a pistol grip. It goes into the lifeline of your hands up here and then the lifeline of the others. Now you're going to get much more feel. And again, for this blade putter where I just want to release the blade of the club, you're going to get all that feedback and all that feel from the blade. Last call out when it comes to these particular models that I'm holding, you'll notice they've got grooves in the face. I'm going to take you outside to look at loft and roll. Keep in mind those grooves because they're what set that golf ball into forward motion. Loft becomes the next thing that we look at when it comes to your putter. I talked to you earlier about CG location and the mallet versus the blade. There's a reason I've transitioned now to the green. I want you to get about a 12, 15 foot putt. Don't get caught into making it. Remember, this is a fitting. It's not about if you're making putts just yet. We're gonna do that at the conclusion. Before you hit anything, simply take a marker, Take something you can use as a ruler and place a line on the green. Perpendicular to our intended target. The next thing I want you to do is two golf balls. You simply pop them down next to that line. And I am making here 
your homemade launch monitor for you. In your club champion fitting, you may have high speed cameras that can calculate this for you. But if not, it's something that's important for you to do when you get back to your home practice green. Once you've got two golf balls down, you simply use your rule edge to put another line in the green. Then one golf ball goes down and a third line marks on the green area. This gives us some markers that we can put in the turf. You line up your logo of your golf ball with that first one. Now, I'm gonna use a putter that I've been working with. You can use a tripod or have a friend capture this. For us, slow motion goes onto the camera and we simply align that lens with the golf ball. There, set up to it as you have been doing before, towards your intended target. Remember, we're not lost in making it, not too concerned, but that distance to that target is the pace and the energy that we're gonna put into this putt. Loft, on our loft and line machine, how this leading edge is in relation to this shaft is now what we're looking at. Hit the putt. As you capture the results, you now return to your video and you will capture as the putt leaves the screen when that logo on your golf ball is in motion and how quickly does it get onto the turf. And you will see as I take the putt, I look at my distance, that works for me, and I want the golf ball to be rotating as close as it can be to that second line that is two golf balls away. And then based on where you're putting in the country, on the turf as soon as possible by the third. That would be the correct loft for this putter. If you're playing on slick greens, you can have the ball on the green as close as you like to the second line, as long as the logo is in motion as soon as it leaves the first. And then if you're playing on greens that are perhaps Bermuda or Poana, you want it landing as close to the third. But this is gonna tell you the player, based on center of gravity location, your fitter will go through this with you, what loft you should have on the blade. Now you've gone through everything. There's nothing more to do. You've got the length, you've got the lie, you've got the loft based on how that ball is coming off and where you play your golf in the country. The last thing to look at is shaft. And this has had a lot of advances in recent years. Now we have stability shafts that have a different weight to them versus the steel, be it stepless or have a step into it. Once you've set the toe hang that works for your stroke, this is where I press you just to hit some putts. But again, don't get caught into the target. I literally just want it to be feel. So take your practice strokes, looking at the edge of the green. Remove any obstacles in this case. Edge of the green, get the feel. Maybe have three strokes. The first one's gonna be too firm with that feel, then too short, and then move into it. Perhaps engage at the target and hit. Watch the roll. You know it's rolling perfectly out from your 12 foot pot, so the loft is good. And then you capture one that just trickles onto the edge. But think about the feedback through the grip. If you've selected this larger type grip, how does that feel to you? Hit another one, maybe change the orientation a little bit. Go through the same routine, too firm, too short. Then find it. Now bring your eyes attention back to the ball. How does that feel off the blade? Again, it rolls out great, the distance that I'm looking for, but interact between the two putters until you can get the feel. This is something that you as the player are gonna have to communicate with your fitter at Club Champion as to which one works for you. Once you've gone through all those steps, you've made some critical decisions, then for me, on tour, I'd allow the player to get lost in the drill they're doing, the targets, and spend a bit of time really getting used to anything they do on a weekly effort to train the start line for what they're looking for. So if that's gates or chalk lines, go do it. Have five or 10 minutes on your own trying to make putts, trying to feel the entry point into the hole with speed, whether you're gonna hit it firm or whether you're gonna hit it soft. It's a great process and it's really something you should do to find the perfect putter for your game. You can gain so many strokes here, but you have to have the right match for you. So that concludes it, putter fitting in a nutshell for putter fitting month at Club Champion. All that's left 
is for you to find the perfect fit at Club Champion.